afraid of the dark. Hello, my listener. The story I'm going to tell you today is really creepy. Get the kids away from the screens, make yourself a cup of coffee or tea, and enjoy this horror. Before we begin, I'm going to ask you to support our channel by subscribing, commenting, and reacting. We are just at the beginning of our journey on YouTube, so it's very important to us to know that people like our stories. Thank you for your support. In our family, there was a tradition. Every summer, we would go to a distant but beautiful village to enjoy nature and relax. There were marshy forests that seemed impassable. The area had a somewhat gloomy atmosphere and our relatives lived in a small village at the edge of the forest. Essentially, it was a summer cottage settlement. When we arrived, it was a cloudy day with light rain. While the adults were lighting the barbecue under the canopy, the women were busy in the kitchen, and my brother, the only child in the family, and I were bored. Towards evening, we had a cheerful company dinner of shish kebabs. The mosquitoes were buzzing around the vodka, and the women were simply chatting about life. By that time, fog had rolled in from the marshes as often happens in our area. During breaks between singing songs, relatives told stories about the locals, and one of them deserved special attention because it had a direct connection to what happened next. There was an old grandfather living in our village. His little house stood on the edge of the forest, and he was rarely seen, maybe once every couple of years. The grandfather never spoke to anyone, wore the same clothes, and always avoided people. None of the locals even knew how old he was. He seemed to be older than anyone else in the village. His house was never lit from the inside, which was very suspicious. He had no relatives, at least no one had ever seen them. When the grandfather appeared at the edge of the forest, he would look towards the village for about a minute, then turn around and disappear into the woods. After discussing him, we talked about something else and forgot about it. We sat, ate, and had fun and the fog descended like steamed milk, lingering for a couple of hours until it started to get dark. Then it gradually dispersed. Someone suggested taking a photo against the backdrop of the forest. The place was beautiful, and everyone agreed. The village was surrounded by forests with tall mountains behind them. We took pictures with an old Polaroid camera, on the developed photos, we saw small defects in the form of pale orbs, which were mainly around the grandfather's house. Then my father and his friends went to bed, while the women stayed on the veranda to chat and finish the wine. I, still young, stayed with them for company. I was seven years old at the time, and at that age I didn't want to go to bed early at all. We started gossiping about relatives, then again about the locals, and we remembered the old man. I was looking at the photos and noticed that on one of them, in the distance, the old man's house surrounded by orbs was visible. I got scared, and when on the next photo I saw that same old man walking into the woods with some bag. I realized that looking at the photos alone was beyond my strength. I showed the photos to my mother and sister. They passed them around, and everyone agreed that it was scary. But what happened next traumatized me for the rest of my life. Late at night, we were seeing off the neighbors. Their house stood between ours and the old man's house. Approaching their home, we hugged goodbye but before we could finish, we all heard a strange sound, as if wind was blowing through a huge pipe. I began to tremble with fear, but what came next was even scarier. Then another sound, similar to grunting, came from the direction of the old man's house, 
My sister ran home to call the men, and my aunt was almost having a heart attack. All the neighbors rushed out, and even our men came running to the sound. No one said a word, everyone just stood there, listening to these sounds and succumbing to groundless panic, as it seemed to us. My mother took my hand and my father's. Eventually, we all went to the old man's house in the woods. As we approached, we smelled something unpleasant. A smell of metal mixed with something resembling decay. Approaching the house, it was unclear if anyone was inside. Everyone was scared. No one wanted to knock on the door. Not only was the old man scary himself, but now it was also night, and there were strange sounds. The door turned out to be unlocked. The neighbor went in first, followed by everyone else. Inside there was terrible chaos, and the stench was incredible. We went either into the living room or the dining room and stood there in shock, not making a sound at what we saw. There was grandma lying on the floor. There was something resembling a muzzle on her head. She was without legs and arms. Apparently they had been amputated long ago. The grunting sounds we heard outside came from her chest, which had been punctured. There was a stake on the floor nearby. Such a stake is used to pierce the hearts of pigs when they are slaughtered. Our women came to their senses and rushed to help. The sight was disgusting. Blood was flowing from the pierced chest, and the same sounds were heard. My father turned me away from the wall so I wouldn't look at this sight. We called an ambulance. When it arrived with the police, the noise had stopped by then. Investigators later concluded that Grandma, who was about 40 years old, was imprisoned, and the old man slowly cut her. First, he cut her vocal cords so she couldn't scream. God knows how he stopped the bleeding and how she managed to survive at all. But she didn't live long enough for help to arrive. And since that day, no one has seen the old man. All that remained was his silhouette in the photo.